Hi there, we're going to evaluate the limit of 1 minus cosine x over x squared as x approaches 0. In a previous lesson, we went over a very similar limit that had x instead of x squared in the denominator. I'm going to assume you haven't seen that lesson. If you have, you should give this one a try on your own. As you might guess, based on the graph of this function, the limit's going to turn out to be one half. But in order to show that, we'll need two familiar results. The Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And this familiar limit, sine x over x as x approaches zero, has a limit of one. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons proving both of those results that we'll be using. Let's go ahead and do our work in blue. First, notice that substitution is certainly not going to work. We can't just plug in x equals 0. If we tried that in the numerator, cosine of 0 is 1, so we'd have 1 minus 1, which is 0. In the denominator, of course, we'd have 0 as well, and so, yeah, that's not going to work. We'll have to be a little bit more creative with how we evaluate this limit. This is one of the situations where what's called the conjugate is going to be very useful. If you don't remember what the conjugate is, the conjugate of 1 minus cosine x just means to flip the sine in the middle. So the conjugate of 1 minus cosine is 1 plus cosine. So we're going to multiply the numerator by that conjugate, 1 plus cosine of x, and we'll multiply the denominator by 1 plus cosine of x as well. That way we're just multiplying by 1, so this is perfectly valid. The reason we might think to use the conjugate here is because in the numerator we have 1 minus cosine x, and the conjugate can be useful when we would rather have the difference of the squares. So instead of 1 minus cosine x, once we do out this math, we're going to end up with 1 squared, which is just 1, minus cosine squared. That's really nice because then we'll be able to do a substitution using the Pythagorean identity. So I'll go ahead and carry out this multiplication and write what we get. And there it is. In the numerator, we have 1 minus cosine times 1 plus cosine. In the denominator, of course, we've just got x squared times 1 plus cosine x. Now, see the magic of the conjugate at work here in the numerator. We have plus cosine minus cosine. Those cancel out, and that will leave us with just 1 minus cosine squared. Like I said, we've got the difference of the squares. That takes us to this next line. Now our limit is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine squared. That's what we have left, and that's being divided by x squared times 1 plus cosine of x. Now, how do we use the Pythagorean identity here? 1 minus cosine squared x. Well, the Pythagorean identity says sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So let's subtract sine, or excuse me, cosine squared from both sides. Doing that is going to leave sine squared by itself on the left, and on the right we're going to have 1 minus cosine squared of x. So here where we have 1 minus cosine squared, we'll replace that with sine squared. It's a simpler expression, and we'll be able to do some work with that. So here we go. We replace 1 minus cosine squared with sine squared. Now, how are we going to finish evaluating this limit? What we're going to do is use the limit product rule. We're going to split this limit into the product of limits that we know. Notice in the numerator, we have two factors of sine, and in the denominator, we have two factors of x. So we could separate those. That way we'll have sine x over x and sine x over x. And we know what the limit of sine x over x is when x approaches zero. That is one, we know that. So that's great, and all that's gonna leave is another limit that just consists of one divided by one plus cosine of x. And that's fine because we can just evaluate that limit by substitution. All right, here we go. So we've got sine x over x and then another copy of sine x over x because we've got two factors of sine 
add two factors of x. All that remains then is the limit with 1 over 1 plus cosine x. That's the only stuff that's left over. And now, by the limit product rule, we just have to multiply all these limits together and we'll be done. Sine x over x with x approaching 0, as we know, that's 1, and this is the same thing. Sine x over x, that's 1. And then what about this guy? This guy is continuous at x equals 0. Just plug it in. So we're going to have 1 in the numerator. Let me see if I can get a straight line here. 1 in the numerator, and cosine of 0 is 1. So this is 1 plus 1 in the denominator. And so our final equality here, 1 times 1, that's just 1. We don't really have to write that. And then we have 1 over 1 plus 1. Just like we expected, it's 1 half. And that is how you show that the limit of 1 minus cosine of x over x squared is equal to 1 half. Hope that helped. I'll leave some links in the description to some other similar limit problems. Let me know if you have any questions or requests down in the comments. See through big glass jar Abstracting everything Aligned in rows of